you and I, every human being, every person in this world, every person in this world has been set apart by God for a particular purpose. You have been set apart by God. I have been set apart by God before, while I was in my mother's womb, while you were in your mother's womb, our daughter while in, her, while in the womb of my wife, she had been set apart, everyone, for a particular inner purpose. We are just not going to be looking at somewhat of a new um, topic here for our Wednesday services. Okay, all right, yeah. And, uh, and that is uh, titled, Destined by God for a Purpose. Okay, Destined by God for a Purpose. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, uh, what are you destined by God to do? Okay, so that is what we're going to be uh, looking at. So, just as a bit of um, introduction, now, um, please do understand that you no know, any um, product uh, without a purpose, there is no product out there in the market without a purpose. Pardon me. And uh, when the purpose of a product is not known, then um, Abuse is what is inevitable. All right, yeah. When the purpose of a product is not known, abuse what is is inevitable. Um, we have a ten month old, you know, daughter. Praise God for her. <laughs> and sometimes she will take you know certain things and uh, she put it in her mouth and uh, she will maybe use them, you know, for different things because she doesn't really know. You know the purpose of those you no know, things you see so and uh, so she's abused so she abuses you no know, those things not no just not saying well because she doesn't know so when she grows and she understands that oh um i'm not supposed to you know um you know we're taking this you know cable and they put in my mouth <laughs> which we're running around doing right now my wife and i you know having to drag her out from different places yeah so um uh yeah it's it's fun actually yeah so we have to you know, yeah, I mean, she is just all over the place the tango that's that's the beauty of the joy of uh, of of, uh, of parenthood i guess uh so yeah we're trying to do that so it's just because she does not know so now when we talk about you know being destined by god for a purpose that means uh not to, 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 it, as you know, I always you know, tend to look at you no know, um, definitions as well. Definitions. So when we talk about being destined, we're talking about to set apart. To destine means to set apart for a particular use, purpose. To set apart to destine. Okay, destine means to set apart for a particular use or purpose. Okay, all right. So uh, the other definition is you know, to appoint or ordain beforehand. To appoint or ordain beforehand. We're looking at the word destined here. D-E-S-T-I-N-E. Destined. It is to appoint, to ordain, to appoint or ordain beforehand. Hallelujah. As by divine decree. For ordain, predetermined. I'm using this in no terms, okay, so that you understand where we're going to. All right, yeah, praise God, hallelujah. So, um, that's why we use that's why you know the topic says, you know, what sorry, pardon me, it says destined by God for a purpose. Now, every equipment which I'm using, everything around us, everything that we see in our homes. Uh, in our offices, in our workplaces, um, they are all being manufactured, designed. Okay, yeah, they have been manufactured, they have been, um, uh, you know, uh, designed for a purpose. They have a design and they have a purpose. The manufacturers will have a design, they will have a purpose for it as well. Praise God, hallelujah. So um, none of it, everything, everything, including the clothing I'm putting on, okay, yeah, it has a purpose. It covers my nakedness. Let me put it that way. The microphone I'm using here is helping to amplify my voice, especially you know through the camera that I'm using. Um, so everything, the table here I'm using, so it was created, it was manufactured, you know, somewhere in a factory, 
and it's been released. So there's nothing here. The building where we are, where I am in my office, is also designed for a purpose. You get what I'm saying? So everything around us, there is a purpose and there's a design for it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, um, no manufacturer would produce or would decide, or no inventor, no manufacturer would uh, spend his or her time just to produce nothing or to design nothing or to invent nothing. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Yeah. It's not so that's, I mean, the, the, that person is like, it's got something, you know, um, not really right there. So no manufacturer will do that. No designer will do that. That's a waste of time, a waste of resources, a waste of money. So you want to do for why? Why would you get into a, you know, have a, a, a manufacturing and just all you want to do is just do nothing, just produce nothing, just design nothing, just invent nothing. I mean, come on. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense at all. So this is, you know, why the, um, uh, the, the notion, the, uh, what the, um, those Satan misled and deceived scientists are peddling about evolution. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So evolution in itself is, is, is discrediting who God. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. In the scriptures, the Bible says, God says, I created the world. I created this. I did this. I did. And it shows, okay. I did this, but say no, but others will say no. Okay, that's fine. That's that's your subject. You are you are entitled to your own opinion. But they said no, no. Everything was you know just came bang. So the, so the question I've always asked is why is the laptop or the computers that those scientists are using? Why did they not just you know um, uh, evolve out of scrap metal or out of scrap you know whatever it is? No, but it was manufactured somewhere in the factory. The book that they are using, that they are reading, where it is just all of a sudden come from, no, it was also written or manufactured somewhere. So, now, when it comes to you and I, when it comes to you and I, okay, yeah, we need to understand that, you know, we were created. Now, you need to have the understanding by faith. The Bible says, you no, know, in the book of you know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, it says, you no, know, by faith, we understand that the, that the King James Version says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. That's number one. So you, so it is it's only through faith. I mean, so a couple of, you know, uh, months ago or so, I think it was last year or so. And, and that is why a lot of people, a lot of, you know, those so-called scientists, humanists, humanists or whoever it is, no, they don't understand it. They can't, it doesn't make sense to them because it is, you can only receive this by what, by faith that the walls, everything in the physical uh, well, and, and the spiritual were created by who? By the word of God, by God. God created them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if we look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says, you no, know, here that uh, it, says, it says, God says, let us make man in our, what? In our image. And according to what our likeness. Let's see that. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God decided to create you and I, to create the whole of humanity. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he said, Let them have, we should have what? Dominion. Over the birds of the air, over the fish of the sea, over the cattle, over everything, creeping things. Yeah, it says, so then, uh, so God created man, okay, in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. Okay, yeah, okay. So these are the things that you need to understand why God created us. Now, if you look at the book of you know, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. That's the anchor scripture here. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, uh, I'll read from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1 reading from verse 4 it says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you what a prophet to the nations. Okay, yeah, all right. So it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, 
I sanctified you, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Now that is Jeremiah. This is the word of the Lord concerning who? Jeremiah, the prophet. So God gave him this, so he knew, so he understood this. And he set out to do the, what he was destined by God for. Number one, God knew him before he was formed. Now, so this is why every one of us, God knows us ever before we're formed. Okay, yeah? Uh -huh. Like, um, even before our, our, our daughter was born, I've, you know, uh, I mean, we, I think I've said it before, you know, 13 years. Um, you know, the Lord showed it to me 13 years before. I'd already seen her. I'd seen her. I know the name. I had seen her in the vision. The Lord showed her to me in a vision, my, my uh, daughter. The Lord showed her to me in a vision. So I, I knew her name. That was a name that I, I you know, the Lord, you know, gave to Lord. I don't, I had, I don't, I'm trying to explain it to you. That was, that was the name that I got in the vision that, you know, of her, of her our, our daughter. So, so, so she's there already. So she was somewhere in heaven waiting to be dispatched. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what I mean? So, and so there's a purpose for, for her, you know, coming. So, so this was 13 years before she came, you know, into being. Praise God. Now, so, so you must understand, so God, just like the Bible says, you know, it says, before I formed, so before, you know, um, my wife and I came together, you know what I mean? Now, you know, um, uh, you know I, I, I already knew her. I knew her already. So, so you know, so, so when my mother was pregnant, you, so we already, I already knew, Although, yeah, initially there was until we did the scans and everything, you know, yeah, yeah, then we knew the sex, okay, right. So, as in, you know, this is, this is it. This is who, this is, this, she's the one. So, God knows, it. He, he, he knows every, everyone that is coming to this world. God knows each one because he's the one that dispatches us all into this world. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Now. Now, in the case of, you know, Jeremiah, he said, you know, that before you were born, I sanctified it. Well, sanctified that means set apart, destined. That's why I said, you know, uh, the definition of destined means to, uh, you know, to set apart. Destined means to what? To set apart for a particular use, purpose, or design. So, you and I, every human being, every person in this world, every person in this world has been set apart by God for a particular purpose. You have been set apart by God. I have been set apart by God before, while I was in my mother's womb, while you were in your mother's womb, our daughter while in, her, while in the womb of wife, she had been set apart, everyone, for a particular you know, purpose. And then it says here, I ordained you what a prophet to the nation. That is Jeremiah. Now, you are then, you know, can I say predestined for a particular purpose. Now, the question is, what is that purpose? How do you know that purpose? Here, so here is Jeremiah that, you know, he was you know, set apart. You no, know, this is what he was sent to do. And he knew his purpose. He pursued it and he fulfilled it as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you know what uh, you are destined by God to do? Do you know that? Like I said, you know, no manufacturer will create something a uh, complete, you no know, waste, a complete, you no know, nothing, a complete, you no, know, no. There is a purpose. There's a reason why. Although sometimes, you know, if, yeah, the inventors, you know, back in the days, they will do some trials and everything, and uh, you know, because they're trying to get a particular product, but something else, you no, know, those coming by accident, yeah, they get something else entirely. But they set out to do a particular, uh, to create something. Okay, yeah, creating means you bring into existence what was not there before. You and I were created because we were not there before. Praise God, hallelujah. And you were created by God and destined by him for a purpose. Even before you were born, you were set apart for a word, for a purpose. Now the question is, what is that purpose? Like I said, you know, Jeremiah knew what his purpose was. And he was then, he began you know, to carry that particular purpose out. Okay, it says, you no know, verse uh, uh, verse six says, then said I, this is Jeremiah chapter one, verse six now. Then said I, ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak for I am a youth. But the Lord said to, him, to me, 
do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, uh, to deliver you says the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, if you read you no know, further down, you, you will see that you know, uh, you know, the Lord, uh, uh, if you look at verse 17, it says, you know, uh, Therefore, prepare yourself and arise. Uh, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and, and an iron pillar and burns walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. So, you know, so that was the assignment that God you know, gave you know, to him. What is your purpose? What are you being destined by God for? Why are you in this world at this time? Why were you not born 10,000 years ago or 5,000 years ago? Why were you not born in the dark ages? Why were you not born in the, say, in the first or second century? Why are you here? Why are you alive by, at this time? There is a reason that there's a purpose no, for that. And the only way that you can know and understand the purpose for which you, know, you have been created or you have been what you are destined by God for is to be connected to the one who created you and I. Praise God, hallelujah. And the only way you can be connected to God who created you and I is through Jesus Christ, his son. It is when you repent of your sins, when you accept God's forgiveness, when you turn away completely from a life of sin and you then receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then you are serving God, then he makes it clear to you what it is, you know, your purpose is in life, what he, did, what he had destined you for, to do for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if we look at the book of you know, Isaiah chapter 49, Isaiah chapter 49, I'll read verse 1. There's another person here, the prophet um, Isaiah, says, Isaiah chapter 49, I'll read from verse 1. It says, listen, O coastlands, to me. And take heed, you peoples, from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From what? It says that from the matrix of my mother, he has what? He has made mention of my word. That means from the inward parts of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. He has hidden me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver. He has hidden me. Now, look at, let's jump to verse 5. Look at verse 5. Look at what his purpose. Look at what God destined him to do. He says, and now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, to bring what? To bring Jacob back to him so that Israel is gathered to him. So that, so, that what, so, that, so that Israel is, is gathered to him, for I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. So is, he did that. God did that. Okay. Pardon me. You know, um, why he was formed, what he was set apart to do was to, it says, you know, verse 5, I read verse 5, and now the Lord says, who formed me from the womb to be his servant. He was formed to be, God formed him to be his servant to bring Jacob back to him. So Isaiah's purpose was to bring Jacob back to who? Back to God. So that Israel is gathered to him. So that Israel what is gathered to him again. This is what Jeremiah and this is Isaiah. What are you destined by God to do? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What are you destined by God to do? Are you just you know, here, you know, just a while away time? Then that is going to be, um, then obviously um, you begin to abuse your life because a lot of people do not know. They don't understand, you know, the purpose of their lives. They don't understand, you know, why they are here. They don't understand it. So that is why they can, <clears throat> excuse me, they can abuse, you know, the purpose of that. They abuse themselves, unknown to them unknown to them now why would somebody now you know god created you as a man why would you start to change your sex 
because they don't know why they were created by that they were, that they were created by who by God why would you start you know, to say okay no this is not who I am so because they have been they, they have been told a lie they have been told a lie by 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 the devil praise God so no offense to anybody but that's just what it is that's the truth so they have been told a lie. So but if they understood you know, from the scripture that you were being created by God and they are able to focus to know, you know, what is the purpose of their existence and they go to the source, the Bible, the word of God, and they, you know, receive the word of salvation and decide to repent, then they would know, then they would know, I mean, there's no iota of doubt you know, in, their, in their hearts you know, for them to start you know, thinking, oh, am I supposed to be this, am I supposed to be that, no, I'm supposed to be a male, no, I'm not female, I'm supposed to be a male, and, and all the rest of them. You know, so, and, and that is happening all over the place. Now, if a person knows the purpose of his or her life, I would not, you know, he would not be, he or she would not be, you know, gay or lesbian. Yes, that's the truth. Why? Because you know that, no, I have been created as a man to be married to a woman. Praise God, hallelujah, and that is the scriptures. So I can then have, you know, children and, you know, have this, you know, godly relationship with my spouse. Amen, okay, all right. Of the opposite sex, amen. So all these things are very, very important. Now, that is fundamental. And then you now, you know, know, okay, well, there's a reason why God, you know, sent me in this world to do a particular assignment, you know, for him. Because when you die, what's you have been sent to do in this world and it has not been done you did not do it or you don't know it <laughs> uh i don't even know christ you have not received christ as savior or lord uh, my friend my friend my friend my friend listen then you have already made a plan to spend the whole of eternity in a place called hellfire i don't know um um scare you but that is the truth you need to know you need to understand this Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So, understanding the reason for your creation is also important. Understanding what God has destined you for is key, is critical for what you, you wake up every morning to do. It's not just about, you know, you go to work, you work your 9 to 5, or you do this, you do that, you know. You know, you see some people who are, who are retired already, retired, what were you doing before? No, <laughs> I met a guy. I met a man you know, the other day on the, while uh, out in evangelism, and he was said, you know, that uh, you know he used to work in the Roy, um, um, at the Royal Court of Justice, um, uh, yeah, in the, at, at just um, in Central London, and he said that you no, know, they were deceived. He was deceived, and that he was retired. He was made to sign some documents, and and so they retired him earlier than he is expected. Uh, um, you know, retirement in a time. And so he doesn't really do very much at all. And guess what? He was blaming God. He was, you know, cursing God as, you know, God was the one who, uh, you know, did that for him. And I said, so why are you cursing God? Why? And I explained to him, I said, no, that's not right. You know, some people deceived you. The people, you know, there, they, you know, people in the royal courts or wherever it is, they deceived you. So, but you know, he does it, but he didn't know that he was blaming God. You know, where did God, where did God, where did, where, where did God come into this picture? You're walking somewhere and you're deceived. You know what I mean? So, and so this is the thing. So right now he just goes. He's not really doing very much at all. He's just there. You know, just while in the time. Yeah. Meanwhile, man, I mean, there's there's so much work to be done for the gospel. You know, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Now, so. Understand that, you know, um, you have been created you know, by God you know, for a purpose. You need to know what that purpose is. And you need to start to pursue it. You need to put your mind to it. You need to plug yourself to it and to do it with all your what, with all your heart, with all your mind. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, weeks, couple of days ago, I was out uh, as usual. Now, most of, we don't, we do not... Um, uh, um, put on social media while we're out on the street because you see, although we used to do that before, but it was as if like you know, are we trying to get people's opinions or people's reactions? And most people don't want to do that. They don't want you to be talking, you know, filming them or on camera. They don't want to come on camera, whatever it is. So, and I felt, you no, know, what, what am I doing? So, no, 
uh, I'm answerable to he who called me for this assignment. He's the one that I'm answerable to. I'm not answerable to, you know, oh, yes, you know, they're dead. I mean, I'm not against you know, those who uh, would do that. But, you know, I mean, these days, it's like everything's all about, you know, no social media. There is somebody following you every day, you know, seeing you every day. You're doing you know, what? Uh, well, it's, it's amazing, actually. I um, I, I don't know. Well, God is faithful and uh, you know, and uh, all is well in Jesus' name. I won't say anything at all about that. Yeah, so and uh, so I was out, uh, so and um, so we do a lot of that by the grace of God. Maybe occasionally we might have to maybe just take a picture or send a bit. But yeah, that's what we do. And I was speaking with this Jewish rabbi. I was speaking with this Jewish rabbi. And this Jewish rabbi had nothing but, you know, um, negative things. In fact, first of all, he said that you no, know, Jesus is just you no. Know, um, it, it's just a figment of one's imagination. He never existed. Then he now said, "Okay, Jesus you know, was this. He did that. He that did that." And that, everything. I mean, just really you know, washed you no know, um, my savior and Lord. He just washed him completely. That, 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 that and everything. So I said, "Okay." I said, "Sir," I said, "Thank you very much for all that you've said that he didn't exist." Said, so how come that? This same Jesus you're talking about that does not exist and he didn't do nothing at all, he's this, he's that, no, yet there are many people all over the world who are following this same Jesus and their signs and their miracles and their testimonies of his power that is working in the lives of so many people. There's healings, there's deliverances, there's miracles. How do you interpret that? How do you now, you know, um, how do you explain that? He says that, he said to me that, you know, all the Jewish rabbis are being this, being taught whatever it is to to become doctors or something, <laughs> so that they can help their own people. So that night I was, you know, um, praying. I, I was praying, and you know, before the Lord, I was just you know, praying about it, you know, saying to the Lord, Lord, look at this. And uh, the Lord spoke to me clearly and said, you know, that's uh, that's why I sent you to them. So he spoke to me, he said, that's why I sent you to them. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. So I have been sent by God to you. I have been sent by God to a generation, to this generation. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I have been sent by God to reconcile humanity, people to God, through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. And not by my ability, but by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what God destined me for, by the grace of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you know, I can give you, you know, the whole um, information in terms of, you know, how they started. But again, it came to me, you know, I had to, uh, I gave my life to Christ, you know, by the grace of God while at university, you know, uh, doing my postgrad. And that's how I started. And after that, it began to serve the Lord. So passionate, you know, had this, you know, so much, such a desire to serve God. Now, God, I get, to, I eventually knew that the Lord drew me to Himself by so doing. He drew me to Himself at that, at the time that He did, and I thank God for that time that God, you know, drew me to Himself. So then, round about, so I've been serving the Lord, and in my local church at the time, and you know, some ministers will come, or some persons even in the church will say, "Hey, Clifford." You know, there's a call of God upon your life. There's a call of God upon your life. Now, I didn't really understand any of that at all. I'm, I'm just you know, busy serving the Lord, just doing everything, you know, carrying equipment, you know, here and there, you know, music, you know, um, in the choir, singing, uh, doing a bit of sound engineering. You know, like, you know, every time, you know, people see me there, I'm, I'm always busy. <laughs> I've always been a very busy person, busy doing the work of the Lord. And that's what people will say. So, Clifford, you're always very busy in the church. I say, oh, what, well, really? I didn't, I didn't know that I was doing that, but that's the truth. So, that's what I've been doing. So, in doing that, every time, you know, somebody will come, and some, somebody will come and say, hey, Clifford, this is, there's a call of God upon my life. I see you doing this. I see you doing that. I say, I don't know anything about that. I'm just, you no know, very, very happy serving the Lord with all my heart. So, around about you know, 2008, the Lord, you know, then uh, spoke to me it, that, you know, this is what he has called me to do. Praise the Lord. He spoke to me that he has called me to serve him as his evangelist. This is the calling. 
This is the calling as an evangelist. And um, uh, at that time, you know, I shared the, the news with my mother at the time. And because uh, uh, <laughs> there was a series of, you know, you know challenges, you know, that I was facing when I had to be in prayer and everything. And then that's when the Lord spoke to me. And then my mom uh, said that when I was about 10 years of age, you know, she had, uh, you know, uh, taking me to some, you know, like prophet, quote and unquote, you know, who says, no, listen, he said to, he said to my mom, this young man, this boy, uh, is either going to be a medical doctor or, 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 or well, he said he was a pastor. Um, so, so, well, my mom didn't like the idea of a pastor or of a minister, but she, so she was always, no. Uh, leading me right for just you know to you know study. Why do you study medicine? Yeah, you have to go study medicine. You have to study medicine, become a medical doctor. You know, so yes, I did you know try that you know, but I ended up you know studying microbiology because you know I didn't have enough you know marks you know for um uh, for medicine. You see, so but you know it was only around about two thousand eight. Like I said, that you know, the Lord spoke to me clearly, and I knew the purpose of my of my existence. And by the grace of God, I have been committed by his own grace to that particular assignment. So I have been sent to you. Now, it will surprise you that you know, there are 7.888 billion people in this world. 7.888 billion people in this world. Now, this is, as, this is you know, um, from the um, 2021 uh, 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 st statistics 7.888 billion people obviously would have been more than that by now and of that figure 31 percent 31 percent are christians 31 percent are christians well even of that figure you, know, you have a particular percentage that are catholic protestants and then other orthodox and all the rest of them 31%, that's in which compared to about two, over 2 billion, you know, people. All right, yeah, so I'll just you know, stop. There. So now, so you can see, I mean, even here, where I am in Brentwood that the Lord sent me to, I speak to people every weekend about Jesus. Many, many people don't know about him. Now, why is this important? Because... If you don't know the reason why you were saved in the first place, and you have to be saved, that means you have been, you have repented of your sin. God, by His Holy Spirit, has drawn you to Himself, drew you to Christ. You then received forgiveness of your sins. You repented of your sins. You've turned away from a life of sin, and you have then received Christ as Savior and Lord. Then, my friend, you have a job to do. And that job, amongst every other thing, is to reconcile people to who? To God. Is to tell people about this Jesus Christ. It doesn't stop there. You and I do not convert anybody, but we are vessels and agents of God, agents of Christ Jesus, to reconcile them to who? To God. That is why the Bible says in the book of the first Timothy, it says, no, who desires that all men be saved and come what? And come to the knowledge of the truth. You may not have a, a you may not be one of the fivefold ministry like as I am, and it was, you know, last year, by the grace of God, you know, after, you know, several years of serving the Lord from 2008, that the Lord decided and said, right, okay, now it's time for you to be ordained as an evangelist. Praise God for that. Amen. So, and so this is the thing. So you don't, you may not have to be a full time, you may not have to have a pulpit ministry or maybe one of the five foot ministry, but you must ensure that in every, in everything you're doing, you are reconciling people to God. You are telling somebody, you are telling people about who? About Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. You are telling somebody, you are introducing somebody to Jesus. You are telling them, you are just in one way or the other, just letting people know about Christ. This is very important because when you and I, when you close your eyes in death, and you then open your eyes in, well, my prayer is that you open your eyes in heaven, in, you know, with Jesus, where Jesus will be, where you see Jesus face to face. 
My prayer is that you know, when you close your eyes in death and you open it up, you know, in glory, in eternity, that you will hear Jesus, you know, not questioning you, but saying to you, well done, that good and faithful servant. Now, please, again, I want to make something, I want to make a statement here, please, and that's very important. Now, the Bible says in the book of you know, uh, you know, Luke chapter 15, if I'm not mistaken, it says you know, that there is joy in heaven over one sinner that does all that repents. And that is you know, the parable of the, um, of, the, of the prodigal son. Yes. One. There's one. There's joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, majority of the times, you know, what we do out there, we are out there. We are you know, uh, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are reaching people. We are talking to people about Jesus Christ. I mean, there's a, uh, a lady that was came with me, uh, came to me. Uh, you know, her brother is you no know, born. I mean, you know, fantastic testimony. But she has been not. She's not really been following. Uh, she's not really sure about it. So as she came to me. I was there, and she came, and I asked her the question. We began to talk. So somehow, you know, that's. You know, her brother is born again. I said to her, so you've seen, you've experienced somebody who has who was a drug addict and an alcoholic. She says, your own brother? She says, yes. And you is that completely transformed? She says, yes. And I said, you have seen that already. So you need to know Jesus yourself and receive him as your Savior and Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, so you must understand that there are so many people around us Okay, that you, that Jesus is counting on you and I to be able to tell somebody that Jesus loves him or her. And that you know, that person can come to know Jesus Christ you know, personally. And that he or she will be saved from his situation in the name of Jesus Christ. You, that is your purpose. You may have your day job, which, yeah, all right, yeah, your 95 work, whatever it is that you do. In everything that you do, your purpose must be, okay, yeah, must be whether you are a bishop, whatever you're tied to, whatever you are, you don't have it, whatever it is, forget about title, nobody, there's no title in heaven, is to tell people, introduce people to Jesus Christ, is to give the message. You and I do not convert anybody. It is not in our own, we don't have the capacity to convert anybody at all. It is the work of the Holy Spirit. We give the message. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And it's quite interesting that you know, there are some people that, you know, there was a vision or something the Lord showed to me uh, some time back. I mean, there's some people you see, you know, you know um, that, oh, wow, there's so much the following of such people in, you know, and everything. But in heaven, oh, the way God sees them, he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't see them that way at all. You'd be surprised. So my advice and my admonition to you is this, get to know Jesus personally. You were created by him. And he is the one who will tell you and show you what his purpose and what his plan is for your life. What you have been destined by God to do. So that you do not waste your life in this world. And expecting you know, uh, to be in heaven when you die. I pray for that. I pray that you will do, you will do that. But there are countless other people out there who yet do not know Jesus, who are not saved, who are, you know, perhaps just really uh, on a one-way ticket to hellfire. But you can reach such a person. You were created by God. You were destined by God for that particular purpose, to reconcile people. That is the ministry of every born again Christian, to reconcile people. That is why you and I were not, did not die the day we gave our life to Christ, the day that Jesus Christ came into our life. That is why we did not slump and our bodies fell and our spirit went to heaven. Why? Because there is a job for us to do, spreading the gospel, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's good news. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that you were created by God for such a time as this and for the purpose of spreading the gospel, of reconciling somebody to who? To God through his son, Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Like I said, there are seven, over 7.888, wait, almost over 7 point, almost about 8 billion people. Let's just say almost about 8 billion people in the world today because that particular population you know, figure was way back in 2021. So that's two years now gone. So more people have 
you know, come into the world. So I don't know how many people have died. And let's just say conservatively, 8 billion people. Of that 8 billion, 2.1 or so are Christians. Okay? And even that 2.1 itself, you know, they are, you know, there's, there's like a question mark on that. But it's not about the statistics, my dear friend. It's about you know, knowing that there is a work for you to do, that God destined you for a time such as this, and that when you plug yourself in to know Jesus Christ you know, personally, then you, then that becomes your life in you know, a goal, to let people know, to bring people to the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And that is what this ministry is all about, my friend. That is what we do. That is what you know, God has called me to do, teaching and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, with all joy, with all uh, enthusiasm as well, with passion. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And I want you to know that your life, your life is precious to God. No matter what, understand that, you know, that purpose for which God has created you, you need to know it, you need to fulfill it, you need to be able to start working on it in just in very, very small ways. Very, very small ways. God is about faithfulness be faithful to it and god will continue to you know pour out his grace upon you and i you know as we continue with doing his work in the name of jesus christ so because of time we have you know very very limited time right now i want to pray for you right now i want to ask you do you know what you have been destined by god for if you don't know then like i have said to you earlier is one purpose only and that is you know, for people to know Jesus Christ, for people to be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Do not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you are not yet a born again Christian, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, and you um, are still maybe perhaps you know, still in your sins, or you are not sure of the salvation of your soul, then please give me the opportunity to pray for you right now and to lead you to Jesus Christ. So that you, so that uh, that purpose, you know, in every other thing you're doing, you would know that this is the purpose of God for my life, and you set out to pursue it and to keep doing it until the day you know you are called home, you know, uh, to glory in heaven in Jesus' mighty name. So I'm just going to pray for you right now. So just you know, close your eyes and just you know, pray this prayer after me. If you want to know the purpose for your life and you want to really do it, then pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you today. I, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you. I have broken your laws. And I have come short of your glorious standards. Please forgive me. Now I know that I have done them all in ignorance ignorant of your ways and ignorant of your word and i ask you to please forgive me again wash me clean of all my sins with the precious blood of your son jesus christ i believe that jesus christ your only begotten son came into this world over two thousand years ago died on the cross for me to save me from my sinful nature and from sin and on the third day you raised him from the dead, that I may be justified, as though I never committed any sins. Therefore, I willingly receive you, Jesus Christ, into my heart, to be my Savior from my sinful nature and from sin, and to be the Lord of my life, to be the Master of my life, to be the one whom I now live for, to be the one whom I now follow. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive your Holy Spirit to live a victorious and a successful Christian life, loving you, Jesus Christ, living for you, Jesus Christ, and serving you, Jesus Christ, all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting me as your child. For it is in Jesus Christ's holy name I have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, I'm just going to pray for you right now. Father, I just want to say thank you for those ones who have prayed this prayer. The Bible says that with a heart one believes unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you, Father. Lord, that the light, O Lord, of the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ, has shined into the hearts of these ones. And Lord, they have received you tonight. 
And Father, thank you for the grace that brought them, O oh Lord, to you. And that grace, O oh Lord, I pray be multiplied upon their lives, O oh Lord, to keep living for you, to keep serving you. O oh Lord, all the days of your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray right now, O oh Lord, baptize them all with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Baptize them with your Holy Spirit and with your fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Baptize them with your Holy Spirit, O Lord, and Lord, set them apart for you. Set them on fire for you, O Lord, and Lord, that they will love you, and Lord, they will live for you, and Lord, that they will keep serving you, Lord, that they will keep reconciling people to you, mighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks, O Lord. Blessed be your name, Father. Pray for your families, Lord, that because of them, all members of their families, O Lord, are also saved for eternity in glory in heaven with Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks. Blessed be your name in Jesus. My name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, very quickly, we're just going to pray right now. Now that you, know, you are saved, now that you're born again, I want us to pray together right now for grace, you know, for the wisdom to be uh, able to fulfill the destiny, what we have been destined by God to do. And that is to reconcile sinners to God through his son, Jesus Christ. So I want us to pray right now. Pray for yourself. Pray that God will give you the wisdom, that God will give you the grace. He will give you the favor. He will give you all that is required, Lord, to be able to reconcile people to God, to, re to, to be able to uh, no, no, uh, 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 share the gospel tells people about Jesus Christ so that, you know, through that means, God himself, you know, by his Holy Spirit will draw such person. There are people that I cannot reach, but you can reach them. And Lord, that those people, you, God will, God place them in your life so that you can reach them. Let us pray right now. Father, I pray for my brother and I pray for my sister right now. Lord, that you would touch them. Lord, that you would empower them by your Holy Spirit, Lord, that they would be on fire for you, O oh Lord, sharing the gospel, the good news about, about, about your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, that through that means, O oh Lord, Father, many will be saved, O oh Lord. Many will be reconciled to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, by your Holy Spirit, by your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray tonight, Father, save the O oh Lord, the lost O oh Lord, through us all, through these ones as well, O oh Lord. Let many O oh Lord come. Let many O oh Lord, Father, be delivered, be set free, O oh Lord, Father, from the power of sin, from the powers of darkness, O oh Lord. Through O oh Lord, the uh, the gospel of the Son Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, that these ones, O oh Lord, Father, will continue, O oh Lord, to spread and to and to share with. Um, those in their circle of influence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we say thank you right now. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your wisdom, O Lord. We pray, Father, for, O Lord, a, a grace upon each one, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to do it, O Lord, to do it, O Lord, passionately, O Lord, to do it, O Lord, with enthusiasm, with such zeal in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for your fire upon each one right now. Lord, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit and with your fire, O Lord, each one, O Lord, be Oh Lord, Father, just be on fire, just serving you, just you know, telling people about you, Jesus Christ, oh Lord. And Lord, will be proud, oh Lord, to do it, oh Lord, and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we say thank you right now, oh Lord. I cover each one, spirit, soul, and body, the Lord of Jesus Christ. We come against every plan of the devil, against anyone under the sound of my voice. I come against such works of the devil, against their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, thank you, O Lord, that you even reveal more, O Lord, to them as they keep, O Lord, serving you. Oh, yes, as they keep serving you, Lord, you reveal greater things, Lord, to each one in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you and thank you again. Blessed, blessed be your holy name, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, because of time, I would have, would have preached some more as well, but uh, time is not really uh, on our side. But... But we can certainly, uh, next week, we're going to carry on with this topic as well. So please do not fail to join us so that we can um, perhaps you know, have some more time. Because listen, this is the purpose for which you, know, you and I were created. This is what you know, we have been destined by God for, to reconcile sinners. I was once a sinner. If you gave your life to Christ on this platform, wherever it is, you were once a sinner. So we are those 
on, we are the only ones that can reconcile others to Jesus. Why? Because we have been saved by God from a life of sin. So we are in the best, we are the best people that God has uh, rescued so that we can rescue others from what? From sin, from a life of sin. So please, um, you, you, this is the purpose of your, of your, of your creation, of your existence. That is the purpose of what you are destined by God to accomplish. So don't take it for granted at all. Please do not, do not take it for granted at all. You have to be, you don't say, okay, I'll start maybe next week or next month or 10 years time. No, it has to start now because, hey, God forbid, you know, that, you know, you are taking, you know, home, you know, you go to heaven. Listen, then you say, oh, well, at least, you no, know, I'm going to go to heaven. Jesus will ask you, what have you done? Okay, what have you done? Uh -huh. So please, let's take it, take it seriously. And I know that the Lord is going to bless you abundantly in the name of Jesus Christ. So we're completely out of time. But very quickly, for those of you who gave your life to Christ, who received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of this platform just a few minutes ago, to that prayer that you prayed and you repeated it after me, I want, you to, I want to congratulate you. I want you to know that that's the greatest decision you've ever made. Very, very quickly, four things that you need to be doing. Number one, you need to start to attend a Bible-believing, teaching and preaching church. It must be a church that honors God, glorifies Jesus Christ in all their teachings, their sermons, and everything everything about their church life. They also reverence the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, they also emphasize on the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Yes. Now, number two, so that's the church you should be going to. Okay, all right. So please endeavor to start to attend such a church. Number two, um, uh, you need to start to read the Bible as well. The Bible is for yours to read it and study it and meditate on it daily, daily, every day. Please do not fail and try. Yes, there might be so many distractions, but please always try to study the Word of God every day. Okay, all right? It will be beneficial to you. And also, you know, every Wednesday and Friday, we are here about the Word of God. So please make sure that you subscribe or hit notification bell so that each time we are, we, we are you know, we are, uh, we're live, you will be uh, sent a notification and you can join us as well where you get the Word of God, you know, and, and you'll be blessed by it in Jesus' mighty name. And then thirdly, you need to have an active prayer life as well. Please, you need to pray, okay? I can't emphasize this enough. You need to spend time in prayer every day as much as you can. All right, please do that. It's so, so important. It will help your spiritual life to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. And then fourthly, you start to tell people about Jesus Christ. Don't keep it to yourself. We have flyers. Apparently, we've got tracks as well. Please you no know, contact. Send us a message. Send us an email. Send us a message on, on our social media. We'll send that across to you. So you can also be out there sharing Jesus Christ with people. Yeah, you, you are not, you, listen, just go out there, just say, <laughs> Jesus loves you. You'll be surprised. People will take it from you. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Nobody's going to harm you. Nobody's going to bite you there. Just be faithful. Be obedient. And just do that. And you see God rewarded. That's the way I have been. That's why, I, that's the way. And I, and I, and I continue to wear out there every weekend praise god hallelujah by the grace of god so please you need to this is the purpose for which you know you and i have been saved to serve our lord and savior jesus christ who has saved us from eternal damnation and hellfire others are on a one-way ticket there let us go and you know redirect them to christ jesus through just a tract through you know just by telling somebody jesus loves you have a conversation and that's it, you know, God will touch them as well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So thank you so much. We've gone over time a little bit. But I want to thank you for your patience. We'll meet again on Friday uh, in the month of June, which is which starts tomorrow. So and I pray that, you know, the month of June will be a glorious month for you. And I, for everyone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it shall be a month of breakthroughs, of open, divine open doors of testimonies, of miracles, of signs, and of wonders to the glory of God our Father in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious unto you, lift his kindness upon you, and give you and all that concerns you peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful evening, and look forward to seeing you on Friday by the special grace of God, and uh, enjoy the rest of your victorious week in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Bye.
Join Lighthouse Gospel Ministries every Wednesdays for Bible study and Fridays for revival service on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube via the links showing on the screen. Follow us on all our social media pages for daily inspiration from the Word of God.